Hello. In this short video, I will introduce you to Open Web Steel Joist and the Steel Joist Institute. Since 1855, Open Web Steel Joists have proven their outstanding strength to weight ratio, flexible and adaptable design characteristics, their amazing durability, and economic advantages. Open web steel joists are a remarkable and yet relatively simple engineered steel product. Unlike beams or channels, steel joists consist of five main components. The top cord, the bottom cord, the end web, bearing seat, and the interior web members. And these components are cut, bent, assembled, and welded together to create an engineered product far superior in weight and cost to their monolithic counterparts. Open web steel joists are manufactured using hot rolled or cold form steel with a maximum yield strength of 50,000 psi. Open web steel joists are often referred to simply as steel joists. We'll use the term steel joists throughout the remainder of this program. In 1928, five U.S. steel joist manufacturers came together to standardize their industry. Through the formation of a new association, the Steel Joist Institute, also known as SJI, has developed and established standards for open web steel joist products and the steel joist industry. Since its inception, the Steel Joist Institute has continued to revolutionize its industry by investing thousands of dollars into research, the publishing of load tables and specifications and various other documents, and providing in-depth technical assistance. Furthermore, SJI works closely with major building code bodies, promotes the industry through trade journals, and conducts educational seminars throughout the country. To ensure the standards and quality of its members' products, SJI requires all member companies to have approved design methods for each series of joists. They must also have their joists load tested and pass plant inspections by SJI or third-party inspectors retained by the Institute. This is important because there are various kinds of steel joist products available for different engineering and construction applications. The most basic product alone a bar joist or short span K series joist has over 100 standardized designations across three load tables. For design flexibility, long span and deep long span series joists can be manufactured with parallel, single pitched, or double pitched cords and can also be either underslung or bottom cord bearing. The open web composite steel or CJ series joists with parallel cords only are capable of supporting larger floor or roof loads because a concrete slab is attached to the top cord. This creates composite action between the steel joist and the concrete slab. The shear connection between the concrete and the joist is made by the welding shear studs through the steel deck to the underlying CJ series composite steel joist. Steel joist girders are primary structural members designed to support the concentrated loads applied by the steel joists. Like the joists, there are significant weight and cost advantages for joist girders when compared to solid web wide flange beams. All joists are considered secondary structural products in that they bear on primary structural members such as joist girders, steel columns, and concrete or masonry walls. In typical steel frame construction, joist girders bear on columns. Steel joists are supported by the joist girders. Then the steel deck covers the steel joists and roofing or flooring material is placed for the finished surface. The Steel Joist Institute first published standard specifications and load tables in 1932. Since 1978, SJI regularly produces several publications. The main one is Standard Specifications, Load Tables and Weight Tables for Steel Joist and Joist Girders. Recently, based on research and testing,
SJI has developed standard specifications, weight tables, and bridging tables for composite steel joists. And these documents are revised periodically to include the latest changes in the standard specifications, load tables, and weight tables, along with a history outlining the changes from previous editions. The standard specification, a handbook for the product, not only includes the specification load and weight tables, but also includes several other helpful items to quickly aid the specifying professional. The handbook begins with an introduction to K, LH series joist and joist girders. It lists accessories and details slope seat depth requirements and duct opening sizes. Next, there's the standard specification and load tables for K-series, LH, and DLH series. And these specifications define load combinations, safety factors, and design equations, camber, material specs, bridging tables, erection stability, and handling requirements. Load tables for uniformly applied loads specified with both ASD and LRFD design methods are also included. The wording above the load tables is very important because it explains the significance of the values in the load table. The load tables list each standard joist designation. The first number is the nominal depth, so 24 means 24 inches from the top of the top cord to the bottom of the bottom cord. The letter or letters denote the joist series, K for K series, LH for long span, and so forth. The last number is a simplified way to note the required loading. To determine the loading, this number must be cross-referenced to the appropriate load table. Note the loads vary based on span, and a 24K7 at a 40-foot span has a different load carrying capacity than a 30K7 at 40 feet. KCS joists follow the K-series joists. KCS joists can be used in cases when the loads are not uniform. Following the K-series information is the LH and DLH series information. The standard specifications for joist girders and joist girder weight tables follows that. The figures in the tables indicate the approximate weight in pounds per foot of the joist girder and not the load. Joist girders also have a different standard designation than a joist. The first number, as with joists, is depth. The letter indicates series, G for joist girder. The next number and letter indicate the number of spaces, and the final number is the load in kips at each load-bearing location. Unfactored loads for ASD design are followed by a K, whereas factored loads for LRFD design are followed by an F. Following this information is the Code of Standard Practice for Steel Joist and Joist Girders, which includes the responsibility for design and erection. After that, there is a glossary of terms and appendices explaining joist substitutes, joist top cord extensions, economy tables for K-series joist, an easy-to-use fire resistance assembly ratings chart for all standard durations, and a reprint of the OSHA safety standards for the erection of open web steel joists. In addition to the publications already noted, there are currently eight maintained technical digests that deal with a broad range of applications. These include roof ponding loads, use of joists and fire resistive assemblies, the design of joists with uplift loads, vibrations of steel joists and concrete slab floors, handling and erection, welding of joist, using joist and lateral load resisting frames, and the evaluation of existing joist and joist girders. All of the Steel Joist Institute's publications can be reviewed and ordered at www.steeljoist.org. Why are steel joists the superior choice in a variety of construction applications? For most, there is a definitive economic advantage in using steel joists and joist girders.
The cost to strength characteristics of steel is well documented. Engineered steel joist products are lighter than comparative monolithic products like beams and channels and thus cost less. And because steel joists are made from over 90% recycled steel, they have a much lower carbon footprint and consequently are better for the environment as a whole. In fact, 5400 BTUs of energy is saved for every pound of steel that is recycled. Standardization is another key advantage. When a joist is specified, a 24K7 for instance, simply the recording of that designation automatically embodies all of the specification and load table requirements for that joist. The joist will carry the load as called for in the load table. It will have a standard 2.5 inch end depth. It will be 24 inches deep and will comply with all of the other requirements of the specifications and the load tables. Additional standards regarding bridging, end anchorage, the allowable deflection, camber, paint, among other items are also listed as standards in the specifications. These standards must be adhered to in order for a joist to carry a Steel Joist Institute designation. Another key advantage of using steel joist and joist girders is their open web construction. This allows ready passage and concealment of pipes, electric conduits, and ducts of all sizes. By running these materials through the open webs of the joists, savings in floor height are achieved, thereby reducing the overall height and cost of the building. Joists are also easily erected. They are relatively light in weight and can be erected quickly under almost any weather condition. They are permanent structural components and when properly maintained should not be subject to deterioration in normal environments. In fact, many years ago, while the building was being torn down, the 80-year-old steel joist shop marks were still plainly visible. Flexibility is another advantage. Unlike any other building products, steel joist products are standardized in a wide selection of depths ranging from 8 to 120 inches and spans from 8 to 144 feet with varying loading conditions. With their unitized construction, they eliminate the need for job site assembly, preparations, forming, stripping, or the like. They provide an immediately available working platform as soon as the joists are properly erected, bridged, and welded in place, and the metal deck attached. With this performance record, and an almost unlimited ability of joist manufacturers to design and manufacture these products, Steel joists are the building material of choice for schools and libraries, churches and museums, retail stores and malls, industrial and manufacturing buildings, sport complexes and gymnasiums. For more than 80 years, Steel Joists and the Steel Joist Institute have led the way in providing safe and economical building materials. The Steel Joist Institute has developed a website to help seasoned specifiers to first-time erectors find the latest developments and design aids to make their project as efficient and cost-effective as possible. You can also learn more about our educational seminars and how to attend one. If you desire a one-on-one -on -one discussion with a knowledgeable joist designer, feel free to contact SJI or one of our member companies. We are here to help you make all your projects successful with open web steel joist products. Your comments concerning this program are most welcome. Please feel free to write us at the Steel Joist Institute. Thank you.